Hey everyone, I'm Jay from Boulder Creek Railroad, and in this video I'm going to be showing you one of my brand new kits. This is the CS7 project. This is my first diesel locomotive I have constructed um, for 3D printing. Uh, the kit includes um, quite a few different components for maximum customization because I know there's tons of different, uh, different versions of the CF7 that are out there. Um, note this model is designed to fit on the Atlas GP7 uh, chassis from 1987. Um, it's an older version, but it does run well. Um, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Um, I hope this kit is uh, up to your uh, likings. And, and as always, happy railroading. Okay, so this is the GP7 part. You're going to need to have it disassembled. This is the motor and the frame. You're going to need the shell without the cab. You're going to need the handrails. You're going to need the cab not connected to the body. You're going to need the fuel tank not connected to the chassis. You're going to need both of the trucks. You're going to need to remove the two lighting uh, glazing pieces for the headlights and the front and the rear of the locomotive. And the two horns. Uh, yeah, so you need to make sure you have all these components uh, disassembled since there might, you're going to have to cut a few pieces and customize some of these pieces uh, as well as painting. So um, it's best to have them disassembled beforehand. Here's what you get with my kit. You get one round cab variant, an angled cab variant. You will receive one or, well, you need two pilots for the model. You also receive a bunch of different uh, vents. There is a small vent version and a tall vent version. I know the CF7s have two different types of vents, a small and a tall. the tools you're going to need for your project an exacto blade some modeling cement a saw and a miter box you may also need a pair of wire cutters for the handrails uh, but you could just use the knife One quick note I want to make before uh, you start this project. Um, this is the angled cab uh, that I have that I'm going to be using for my model. Um, as you see, can see, it's a little bit wide uh, or long in some areas. Um, this is because the Atlas uh, chassis that I use has these little metal um, sections that stick out. Uh, this is the size the cab should be. Um, that Now, you could be able to, uh, well, should be able to use the... Um, the cab that is smaller uh, if you have the newer Atlas GP7s because they don't have the weird pieces of metal on the frame that stick out. Uh, I designed mine to fit around that because I didn't want to have to cut the frame. Um, other than that, this model is uh, perfect in every way. First thing you should do before you start this model is test fit the cab. Make sure it's a perfect fit if you need to make sure you need to do any sanding. Um, Make sure there is pretty much uh, no movement on the cab um, at all. Um, and then you should be good to uh, begin starting to make your model. All right, so the first step you're going to have to do is uh, take out this part of the GP7. This is the shell portion without the cab. Um, there's some uh, lettering here uh, that's all the way around the model. Uh, we're going to have to remove that later when we paint the model. Uh, we are going to have to cut 
uh, the model, you're gonna have to cut the cab portion off here. Um, about right there, you wanna uncut that. Uh, you wanna keep that in there and you want to get rid of that end, the front end, you wanna make sure you keep the back. Uh, so here I go, I'm gonna cut the model directly there. There's a little slit in the model as well, so it makes it very easy to cut. All right, there you go. Now it's cut in half, or I guess not really half, but in two pieces. Uh, you can get rid of the other piece, the front piece locomotive, as you're not going to need it. After you've cut your piece, you're going to want to sand the back end. Um, I would just show that there. You want to make sure your cab lines up perfectly. There's no gaps or anything in your model. So... Of course, mine looks pretty good already, uh, so I just need to take some sandpaper to it, uh, make sure the area is flush, uh, and then we can begin with the rest of the project. Now this model has a few uh, support errors here, so like some of the support um, is a little roughed up there on these edges on the back side. So I'm going to have to sand them with the sandpaper as well. And be careful that you don't sand away the door detail. Um, once you're done, uh, you should be able, they should be perfectly flush. Uh, and then you can begin the process of gluing the two parts together. Now would be a good time to test fit the pieces. Uh, put on the uh, GP7 uh, back end and then put on your cab, make sure they fit perfectly. Um, and then uh, you should be good to uh, glue the parts now. Uh, it's always good to test fit your parts because if you don't and you have an error, um, it's not gonna be great when you glue them together because then you're gonna have uh, some screwed up parts. So as you can see, mine looks pretty good. There's uh, no gaps, no uh, problem areas. Uh, so now I'm going to take them off. And uh, I right now I, I already went ahead and I sanded off all the um, lettering detail. Uh, that's just for later when I end up uh, spraying my model down with paint. Um, it's just easier to do it now uh, instead of after I glue the cab together. I find it easier to glue the uh, cab together on the frame. Uh, that way the parts are perfectly in sync um, and that there's no uh, errors. So I put them on there, I add the glue in between and then I press them together. I let them sit for the time the glue tells me to before I continue any part of the model. For my modeling cement it takes about um, an hour and a half to two hours to glue. Uh, so I had to let it sit for a little bit. Um, I put a lot of glue because um, it's a glue that melts plastic together and uh, I need to make sure that these two components are perfectly glued together. Uh, and then want to make sure there's any errors at all. So now it's a little while later, uh, my pieces are glued together uh, and now I don't have to, well now I can remove them from the body shell um, and from the chassis. So there you go, now the pieces are uh, far away and now I can continue on with the rest of the build. I do another test fit with my model, uh, this time with the handrails. Um, this way I can uh, make sure that the model is perfectly set up and ready to go. I also do this so I know exactly where to cut my handrails. They are a little bit long since they are designed for the GP7. So I go ahead and I trim those to the correct lengths and uh, then I uh, separate the model pieces.
The next step is to use the GP7 cap. I want to cut off the areas uh, where the um, little details are for the stairs. So I cut off the stairs on both ends of the model perfectly flush. Just making sure they're perfectly lined up here and then I go ahead and cut it. They are now perfectly cut out, so now I'm going to glue them to the cab. Use my modeling glue again. Uh, make sure you spend the whole amount of time letting them set up in glue, the whole hour and a half to two hours for my glue. Uh, that way the pieces are perfect, and when I put them on uh, the model that they're not going to shift around or move. Um, also, uh, try to make sure they're as flush and as level as possible. If they are a little um, like off, uh, when you put it on the model, it might be a little bit um, like raised up the model a little bit because it's pushing down. It's not perfectly flush. So try to make it as flush and as um, level as possible. Time to put on the horns. Um, I used the horns from the GP7. For the prototype I'm modeling, it has two horns on the left hand side of the model. Um, so I just took mine, trimmed off the little pieces that go into the side of the GP7's body, and then glued them to the top. Now it's time to paint. So the model I'm painting mine after is the Santa Cruz Big Trees and Pacific Railroad. It's Roaring Camp's uh, Standard Gauge Railroad. They have four CF7s. I want to model one of them. 
So uh, the colors I used is this uh, barn red uh, cream coat delta paint, um, this apple barrel parchment or antique uh, white, and some uh, silver metallic paint. I used my airbrush and I sprayed the models down. I masked the areas off. Um, I assume that you're going to paint your model the way you would like to paint yours, so I didn't spend too much time going over this part. It's time for the final assembly of the model. Put your trucks back on the model and begin by test fitting the pieces uh, for the final assembly. Uh, first goes the handrails. They go on the model first. Uh, make sure they go on nice and smoothly. Um, and once they are put down, you should be good to go. They have little clips on the bottom, so I struggle with this for a little bit of time uh, before I'm able to get them completely on. Uh, once they're on, um, I can continue on to uh, put the body shell on the model. Uh, now I just put the body shell on. So I just take out the body shell, um, I move the handrails out of the way the best I can, and then I simply uh, slide the model shell back down on the model. Um, I do have a little bit of an issue. I, um, I forgot to add on a pair of stairs to the model, and so I did it last minute. Uh, they're black, not red. Um, and so when I put it down on the model, they do get pushed up right there. Yeah, you can see it got pushed up. Uh, so uh, I simply push that back later and paint them uh, off camera and uh, then uh, the model is pretty much done. And here's the completed model. Um, uh, it looks really great. I spent a lot of time with the painting and designing this guy so it looks uh, really nice. I think it turned out uh, very, very, very nice uh, for especially looks like a CF7. Um, I did add in a the a little uh, pilot pieces. I did have to trim them. Uh, you can trim them to your liking. I also added body mounted couplers. I hope you enjoyed this video and as always, happy railroading.